My name is Natalie Wilson. I'm a mother of three beautiful children, wife, friend, businesswoman, and a three-time breast cancer survivor. So in 2008, I had a child, my last child, and uh, he was nursing. Greedy little boy, didn't want to stop nursing, but I was ready to stop. Uh, Christmas was coming, and it was just getting too hectic, so I decided to wean him after, after four months. So, did the weaning, and you know, months down the road, when your breasts start going back down to normal, I, I felt a lump while I was in the shower. And I wasn't one of those women that often did the, the feel around at different times of the month. So I didn't know, you know, if my breasts were fibrous or not. I just knew what I felt wasn't right. So I made an appointment with my doctor. She sent me for a mammogram and ultrasound, which both came back negative, saying that it was nothing but maybe some calcifications of the milk ducts. So I was like, okay, maybe. But something inside of me said that it was more than nothing. So we made an appointment to see a specialist and she said, you know, let's, let's wait it out and if nothing changes, we'll remove the lump in six months. So six months came and um, she did the lumpectomy and took out the lump and she, she thought it was nothing because, you know, the doctors can look at the, the tissue and, or the tumor and, and see whether or not it's something or not. And she said, it doesn't look like anything, but let's set it out, send it out anyways. Um, so when it came back, uh, it turned out that it was early breast cancer, which is DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ. You no know, one wants to hear that they have breast cancer. It was, it was difficult to hear. I was a young mom, and the first thing that was going through my mind was cancer, and you equate cancer with death. All I could think of was that I'm not going to be here for my family. So, you know, she said, let's just look on the bright side. We're going to, we're going to go, we're going to get this out. Um, we're going to get it out of you. It's, it's out of you now. And um, we'll see what else we can do to make sure that it doesn't come back. So she sent me for an MRI and the MRI came back that there were some other suspicious areas around the, the region where she took out the lump. So she said, you know, we have a couple options here. It's either go in and take out more tissue or do a mastectomy. We did the subcutaneous mastectomy, which, you know, posed a lot of problems for me. My breast didn't want to cooperate. Um, and at the same time, I decided to do both breasts because I said, if, if I have breast cancer on one side, all I'm thinking of is that it's going to come back on the other. So I told the doctor, I said, I wanted to do both sides. They said, I know this is probably not something you hear often, but just, you know, if you're doing one, just do the other at the same time. And she, she obliged. And um, once again, it was, you know, problematic. I had 10 surgeries trying to fix um, the problems. My body didn't want to cooperate. I formed a lot of scar tissue. I, you know, almost lost one of my nipples. I. Um, had hematomas, which is collection of fluid and blood, and my breast got so big that they had to rush me in and, and release the fluid. I had two blood transfusions, so it was a it was a complicated mess, and that stemmed for about about eight years. So ten surgeries later, this doctor, wonderful lady, she said, "You know, what, Natalie, I don't know what else to do for you, but we're we're going to find you someone to to help you out." I want you to put this chapter behind you of your life and get on, get on with your life. Um, so she found another doctor who did a special procedure using human cadaver tissue. So this was a, a three-step procedure. Um, so it stemmed over a three-year period. So my last surgery was booked the summer of, of 16. Surgeries, you know, went through and my last one was June 6th of 2016 and I was excited. I, I was ready to, to call it a day and put everything behind me. But leading up to that, I noticed um, some concerns with my nipple. I brought it to the doctor's attention be before my 13th surgery and she said she'll look at it and see once she's in surgery. She did a biopsy. Once the biopsy came back, um, 
She came in to tell me that it was cancer again. It's the second time, it's cancer of the nipple now. And she'd have to remove my nipple altogether. Now, removing that nipple and that tissue, again, deemed to be a problem for me because I had the, the implants in there which were part of my reconstruction. And because of all the tissue that was removed from my, my breast, um, when she removed the nipple and areola, I uh, had problems with the tissue and I was forming literally holes in the bottom of my breasts. And, you know, I was oozing all the time. I had to have gauze and bandage there. And so the doctor brought me in for emergency surgery in order to fix that. So she brought me in and did the surgery. And at the same time, she decided to go into the nipple and areola area once again, just to make sure that she got everything. And so, you know, went back again two weeks later, thinking, okay, we got everything, Natalie. That's all she's going to tell me. And she came back to say that I had breast cancer once again. The ductal carcinoma that I had in 2008 had come back. So it was like it was like someone just kicked me in the stomach. I was I was ready to be done with it, and I'm hearing it all over again. I'm hearing it for the third time, you know, twice in in a two month period. Am I hearing that I had cancer again? So I felt defeated. I I really did. Um, I broke down. I I was overwhelmed, saddened. I knew at this point that I, I had to, something had to give. Like I just can't keep hearing the same things over and over again. So had that last surgery and, and altogether I had 16 surgeries. She had to remove my breast altogether. Um, right now I, I have a prosthesis in, I, I have one breast and you know, I'm okay with that right now. Uh, prior to this last surgery and all the other surgery I was going through, I, I always believed that I needed to have the next surgery and the next surgery. Like it was something I, I needed to do in order to bring me back to being whole as a woman again. So here I am now and, and, I, and I don't have a breast, but you know what? I'm okay because guess what? A lot of women don't have their life. So for me to say, you know, I'm upset or I complain about not having a breast would be very selfish of me. And that's how I look at it. And I think that's what keeps me going because I understand that I am owning my story, but I'm also not comparing myself. You know, I've, I went through all the, the moments of breaking down in the shower, you know, you know, busy with the kids all day long, getting them to bed then going into my room, getting my clothes off and going into the shower and you know that's when you you have your most reflective moments I think when you're in the shower or when you're alone you know when you think about everything and you know I, I get to see my body and it can be disappointing, it can be depressing, it can be saddening and I, and I went through all that my kids have only seen me, especially my youngest son, my youngest child, my son he's nine and for you know eight years of his life he's seen me in and out of the hospital so you know he's grown up seeing that and you know now that he's nine he has more questions he he asks more about what cancer means and I think he worries a little bit more about me you know uh, you know not coming back from a surgery or you know hearing the word cancer is indicative to death to him but he, he's, he's, I try to give him enough information to know that mommy's not going anywhere. My older girls are, are better able to understand. They're 17 and 12. So they're better able to understand, you know, what it means to have different types of cancer and to go through the different stages of, of healing through it. So I think they're a little bit more confident that mommy's going to be around for a long time. I learned that everybody grieves in a different way. And, I, and I'm gonna say that I was a little bit selfish. I needed certain attention. And I mean, rightfully so, like physically, I, I needed help with a lot of things, but emotionally, I, I used to think that, hey, I'm dealing with this. This is, this is a heavy burden for me. Like, you're not going through what I'm going through. Everybody grieves differently, so I can't dictate 
how you're supposed to show your feelings. And, you know, I was like that with my, my spouse. It was, I was very difficult. I was a tyrant, um, and I will admit that. And it took counseling for us to realize, for me to realize that he's having his quiet grieving moments and I need to let him have that. I realized that I was going through many stages of healing. I realized this after the fact though, and not until the summer of 2016. Because from 2008 until then, I was a mess. I was going through a ton of surgeries. I was going through a wealth of emotions. And not until I had all this time off in, in the summer of 2016, I started reading. And I came across um, an article written by an author named Gail Goodwin. And she talked about the different stages of healing, 10 stages of healing. And when I read them, I was able to pinpoint them to different times of my life over the last eight years where I was dealing with these things and I didn't realize I was dealing with them. I came to this final stage, which is called philanthropy. We all know what that means. And it was just over this summer and coming to the end of the summer, I just had this, this strong desire that I need to speak about this. So I decided that I need to create a forum. I decided I need to find a way to get my story out there as a way to help and to inspire others. And I decided to create a business and I called it High Heel Diaries. High because we as women, we need to walk high and keep our heads high. Heal, H-E-A-L because it's a healing process and until you realize that it's a process to get to a better stage of your life you're never going to be able to get there but there are stages you need to get through and once you're healed then you can move on and diaries it's because women tend to keep everything private they don't talk about their issues they don't share and it's not because they don't want to but it's because of that stigma that's out there you know, oh, she's dealing with this, or she's dealing with that, or did you hear about this, or did you hear about that woman? She's going through so-and-so, you know, and us females tend to be our own worst enemy. I want women to come out and tell me their stories, whether they're going through something or whether they've gone through something and come through out on the other side. I want women to share their stories, and when other women see each other talking about them, I'm hoping that they will turn around and start talking about their issues as well. It's a place where other women are going to be able to, you know, let us know, hey, you're not alone. So High Heel Diaries is going to be about blogs. It's um, personal blogs. So anytime, I'm, you know, I come across a, a story in my life that I find is insp inspiring or uh, motivational, then I, I write about it. I do weekly blogs. I do weekly quotes. I do events. So any event that has to do with fundraising or, you know, inspiring or empowerment, um, I'm going to be a part of. Right now, well, motivational speaking engagements, keynote uh, speaking, uh, weekly motivational inspirational quotes, YouTube talk shows is my biggest thing right now. I'm going to be doing a lot of YouTube shows where I talk to women about their emotional struggles, their stages of um, healing that they've gone through. And once again, it, it's not only about breast cancer, but it's going to be about women just dealing with anything as a, as a whole. I'm also doing personal coaching. I'm a certified coach practitioner. So using conditioning techniques that I've been taught and trained in as a way to help people get to the different stages of healing, get through the different stages of healing. So to put a plan in action, to repeat it, and to, to repeat it again, and then in, in the end get to a final stage where they can continue to live what they've learned as far as a repeated pattern, and a positive repeated pattern, and come out on the end, in the end um, a better person and have a better life. I want to make a difference in people's lives 
And if I had to be put through some trying times in order to do so, then it was all worth it for me in the end. So come with me as I put on my high heels and walk my way into others' lives in order to empower and inspire them. Welcome to High Heel Diaries.